We'll get that one. Yeah, but it's yeah. not obvious. Maybe. Mm. Well, more of that later, but watch out, Skippy. Here comes a collection of boomerangs. <laughs> People tend to buy the boomerangs these days that are nice and shiny and my motto is the better it looks, the worse it flies. Most people that see me throwing a boomerang go, wow, they really do come back. I was eight years old. I was on a trip uh, up to Coffs Harbour and I saw a boomerang made by Australian Aborigines for $2 and I pestered my dad and it didn't actually work, but it was very much fun to throw. All the really big collectors wanted tribal boomerangs with totems on them and, and things like that and carvings, so they weren't interested in uh, something from, say, Corrindurk or Lake Tyres or any of the mission stations around Victoria. Most of the boomerangs from the mission stations were returning boomerangs and they were really well made. The boomerang was a proper boomerang. Boomerangs were used for a lot of different purposes. They were used for music where you'd clap two boomerangs together and you'd make music, clap them together like this. You'd get soft wood and you'd rub the boomerang backwards and forwards and you could start a fire. You could hunt birds, cutting up a kangaroo. They were just like a Swiss army knife. Well, Bill Onis was um, a man from Kamaragunja. He was pretty much the first Aboriginal entrepreneur. Bill Onis was one of those guys that could see an opportunity. When the Beatles came to Australia, he gave them all a boomerang. He was promoting Aboriginal culture to everybody. This one's called a hook or swan neck beak nosed Kylie. This is made for three different purposes. One is for fighting, as you can see it's got a spike. It was made for hunting and it was also made for camouflage. And I don't mean you could hide behind it because you can still see me, but the Aborigines would put leaves around their waist, they'd put this up in the air and they'd walk along like an emu and they could actually walk right up to a flock of emus and by the time they realised it wasn't an ugly emu, it was a man with a big stick, they were dinner. <laughs> Aboriginal people were able to work out well before any white man thought of it that aerofoil and aerodynamics made a big difference with how a boomerang or a hunting stick flew. It's a magical kind of thing to watch a boomerang come back because you're throwing a heavier than air object. That's sort of like the holy grail of throwing a boomerang, get it to come back, I didn't move. Well, his boomerang did come back, didn't it? <laughs> and I never knew Bill Onus gave the Beatles uh, boomerangs. They yeah. are, that's something yeah. for my Beatles scrapbook. He was a smart man. Yeah. Now each